and solutions based. The point here is McKinsey's done a lot of research on this and essentially yeah. the companies that innovate during recessions, during uh, times of inflation, they're the ones that actually come out stronger and capture market yeah. share. Yes, it's a very fun term to laugh at and I think people butcher it and throw it around too loosely in boardrooms, but you do have to innovate. You know, today we're, we're essentially gonna talk about really practically what that looks like and how businesses can do that. So when we think about innovation, really, there's two sides to that coin and each are equally as important. Otherwise you don't have the coin. <laughs> and one side is the strategy and culture and the other side is the tactics. And I think yeah. that's really, really important because I find these two, like every time I present tactics people are like oh hack tactic spreadsheet template but that's all for naught if you don't have that culture if you don't have that strategy layer that's actually going to feed it through brands need to create a lot more content than they realize especially if they're not if they haven't done it before and they start dipping their toe in the water i always say this like i find myself saying this you need to create a lot more content than you realize because of the noise because of the platforms out there, because of the fact that it takes you a lot of volume to get really, really good. And we see it with our clients all the time. So this is where repurposing is a must. If you're gonna be innovating in your sales and marketing, especially marketing specifically, yeah. repurposing is a must. Welcome to Inbound Bars. My name is Moby Sadiq and I'm joined by Semi, who unfortunately will be leaving us, not Red Pandas, but will be going to Malaysia for a couple of months. <laughs> no, relax. That six weeks. <laughs> he wants me to leave already. Yeah, but we do this show every two weeks. So by the time like you come back, it's going to be a couple of months since people see you. Are you saying you're going to miss me? Oh, uh, maybe. You know, we'll see how we go. Depends on uh, who your replacement is and how good they go. Unless... But I know we're, we're planning some cool things. Um, uh, we might get some guests on, which we used to do back in the day. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. But for now, obviously, send me welcome. Well, let's enjoy the time. While we have it. While we have it. Let's, Let's go. Do it. All right, cool. So uh, Inbound Buzz, uh, there's a few new things that has come up, um, I guess. So one of the first ones is uh, ads coming to threads as X loses ad revenue. So threads for those people is just the version of, um, you know. Uh, Twitter X. Yeah, Twitter. It's a part similar to that. Now they they come about um, saying they're gonna start doing ads now or now that there's they're now apparently they've got 175 million users. Reddit has like 82 million users. Snapchat has about 422 million. Now this is like you know ads is good for threads, but I think there's there might be a reason behind that. I think it's just Meta in general is just um, a really good uh, advertising platform anyway. So they already got Instagram, they already got Facebook. Just having one more. Uh, like, you know, platform for them to advertise on. I think it's really good. Yeah. So the key thing there is, you know, a lot of people have left X because of Elon Musk, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, we're talking about this before. Like, I'm not going to get into it politically, but I'm not going to buy another Tesla because of Elon Musk either. I'm actually going to get a Polestar. Um, but, you know, I'm not the only one. Like so, a lot of advertisers have left, you know, whether on the left wing side, right wing side, they've left X. Mm. So this is a really real threat because for them, advertisers on X to go to, and you just share the numbers, like it's growing, growing, growing for them just to kind of port over. It's like going from Optus to Telstra or Mac to PC. Like it's not a hard switch to port over to threads now because it's, yeah. it's a copy and paste. Part of it, right? It's part of the it's part of the network. Yeah. So if you're in your Google or oh, ads manager, it's just manage one more thread. yeah if you, you can if you can right yeah you're talking about this before like the efficiencies right yeah. like everyone advertises on facebook and and instagram out of the same portal portal yeah. business manager so how hard if you think about this how hard is it going to be for meta just to add like a threads feature yeah and all of a sudden now advertisers have new sort of inventory so yeah, yeah it's, it's a it's a really big opportunity i think if you're already advertising and you want to test some mediums and just watch this space because it's coming yeah, it also might be new because, like, again, first come, first thing. So it's good to look out for that. Um, cool. So TikTok launches a new image sharing app called We. Um, this was an interesting one because when I was reading this article, apparently there was there was another one that had launched that about a, a year ago. Uh, so in the beginning of the year called um, Notes in April. Um, so, you know, uh, the question is, like, why is TikTok launching uh a sh image sharing app similar to like Instagram, you know, like that's the question. Is just... Look, it's about time. Everyone's been copying TikTok for years. I'm a big fan of TikTok. I'm a big fan of not as a parent, <laughs> but as a marketer and someone who, you know, really appreciates like algorithms. It's the best. Like that's why Instagram copied it. 
YouTube copied it. Mm. And so it's about time they started copying something back. Why not? And they'll probably so, do a better not, job. Nothing, nothing to do with like uh, people losing trust in TikTok. No, I, I, I've never had, <laughs> I don't think people are losing trust in TikTok. I think um, governments are because they want to censor certain political affiliations. Yeah. But TikTok is, is the people's network. It's the one that's least controlled. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but I think it's great. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, that's it. I think let's jump into our uh, next featured buzz. Now, the title for this one is Innovate or Die. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll let Moby give us the background on why this was an interesting conversation for today. Yeah, so the CEO Institute, which I'm a part of, asked me to do a keynote on innovation. Yeah. And I was like really grateful because I love speaking. I love every opportunity I can get. I love to like share and develop my speaking, which I have been for a really long time. Uh, but I also wanted to throw a toaster at them because like innovation, like it's such a cliche, broad, vague term that people throw around, right? And Honestly, it's, a, it's innovation is is as cliche as Miss Universe contestants wanting world peace, right? Like in terms of business people, oh, that's the solution, innovation, innovation. So I've been saying this for years, like in my mind, innovate, like innovate or to innovate or innovation is in the top three most abused words that people use on homepages. The other two are customer centric or customer focused. And solutions based. Look, I'm laughing because my my previous business was called Innovate with an eight. Yeah, that's and right, <laughs> which was so creative. It was so creative. It's very creative. And our one of our values was customer centric, and it was focused on uh, you know customers. But hey, look again, that was a you know construction business. But either, that, doesn't, that, didn't, that doesn't make it okay, Sammy. That doesn't make it okay, right? Oh, we're a legal business or construction. The point is they're great yeah, words. Well, that was that's my point, right? Like that is my point because like yeah, you when you do think about it, it's like you know, you don't you need to pick things that are like it took us an hour to pick that name, right? But you, you, know, you, you got to spend a bit more time. Bit more time on it and actually come up with like proper reasons why. And that's why I think marketing is super important now. Yeah, 100%. Branding, yeah. 100%. So, um in saying that, uh, I think there was a I think I was reading like yeah. the McKenzie. Let's talk about why it's necessary. Yeah. yeah. So, McKenzie, right? It said in times of uncertainty and, uh, you know, when organizations tend to like protect themselves when there's a whole bunch of change that's happening. And so, um, and, and then they wait for things to become normal. But the, but the issue here is like, because the things keep moving along and there's no, there's no longer going to be normal. The normal is a new, like change is the new normal, right? So um, instead of like, for example, right now after COVID and stuff, we've got like structural supply chain issues. We've got, um, you know, raising interest rates, construction is like completely, you know, really tough industry to be in at. It's a whole bunch of like sustainability and challenges. So yeah, new, new, new norm. So yeah, that's so the- The point here is- That's what's happening, right? McKinsey's done a lot of research on this and essentially yeah. the companies that innovate during recessions, during uh, times of inflation, they're the ones that actually come out stronger and capture market yeah. share. So- uh, yes, it's a very fun term to laugh at and I think people butcher it and throw it around too loosely in boardrooms, but you do have to innovate. And you know, today we're essentially going to talk about really practically what that looks like and how businesses can do that. Yeah, absolutely. So when we think about innovation, really, uh, there's two sides to that coin and each are equally as important. Otherwise, you don't have the coin. <laughs> and one side is the strategy and culture and the other side is the tactics. And I think yeah. that's really, really important because I find these two like I'm – the content we're sharing today is a lot of the content I'm sharing in that keynote. And every time I present tactics, people are like, oh, hack, tactic, spreadsheet, template. But that's all for naught if you don't have that culture, if you don't have that strategy layer that's actually going to feed it through. Yeah. Because it's a top down, bottom up, it's filtered through the whole business. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so let's talk about that. Like, let's talk about the strategy side. And I think, you know, you had a really good view on one of the yeah. first things there. So, I think it's like having a culture of experiment experimentation. Uh, I think like I heard this from Stephen Barlett, which is like, you know, uh, we're not failing enough. Things just trying and keep trying new things to see how and testing things out that always improves or adds new innovation to the mixture, right? It's putting things, two things together, trying new things out. So, I think that's, that's, uh, that's pretty yeah, important. Yeah, I think for like leaders, if you're listening to this, because I remember when you shared that with me and I shared that with the team, you yeah. know, I, I quoted it to you and you're like, I actually got it from Stephen Bartlett, but failing more. And I realized that I had to set that pace and show people it's okay to fail. 
And not to get too deep, like we tried something early this year, it didn't work. And we're like, hey, cool, oh, amazing, that didn't work. Something amazing. else worked. And then we pivoted from there to something, the AI course that worked really, really well. Yeah. But we couldn't have done that unless we had the other thing. Yeah. And that's how we set the tone there. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like innovation too, like people, there's a lot of misconceptions. Like people think when you think of innovation or like Netflix or, you know, this Dis brand or- Disrupting like industry. Like disruption, Uber. Yeah. That's not necessarily innovation. Like there's different levels of innovation, right? Like that's probably like, and McKinsey talks about this, like that's probably level three. Mm. But the, in terms of other areas of inf uh, innovation, this is what businesses should yeah. look at. And they're a little bit more practical. Process innovation. Yeah. Marketing and sales innovation, which we're going to talk about some ideas. Obviously, it's a yeah. marketing sales podcast. Service innovation. So the process might be actually the process on how you get things done. The service, whether you're a product or service business, it's how you deliver that. Then you've got the product innovation, which is different. That is the actual thing you're doing. Technological innovation and then business model innovation. So as I kind of go through the list, some of them are more kind of basic and fundamental. Yeah which I believe that you should master first and some are more structural like business model innovation or tech innovation that's a lot more bigger and that's what we normally attribute innovation to but you yeah know, it's you know it's everyone's chasing that big big thing to kind of make it make a massive change but it's actually the one percent or two percent of changes that you continuously do that make something really different and something that is more enjoyable or innovate right yeah um i think uh, Stephen again going back to Stephen butler he also mentions that it's like the one percent changes that we keep doing that allow us to grow it's i think one of the it's bigger than joe rogan now um yeah in saying that uh so what is the culture leadership and responsibility that feeds the areas yeah that that's essentially what we're talking about there is like that is actually going to like we we're talking about before the culture will facilitate that the culture will make that happen in terms of leadership, and this is what we found at Red Pandas, like I quickly realized, like we're not tiny, but we're not huge. Like we're a 20 person company now. Yeah. And I quickly realized for anything to happen, we need to develop leaders here. Mm. And we've been using EOS and scaling up and that's worked really, really well. So now like we've got these little patches of these embers of fire, mm. you know, that are actually happening in their own right. Mm. And you know, you, whether it's like any cultural change or business change or innovation, spe specifically innovation, you can't do that unless you've got that culture and you feed that through your leadership team as well. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So uh, just tell us more about what uh, the sales and marketing innovation trends that you see that's coming yeah, out. Yeah, so right? it's really important that first side of the coin. Let's talk about the other side yeah, of the coin. That first stuff. side is the strategy, the culture and all of, you know, all that fundamental side of things. Um if you don't have that sorted, that is the first problem to solve because the rest is all for naught. Now we're going to talk about the other side. So actually some sales and marketing innovation trends that we see. Yeah. The first one, and this is something we have been talking about for a while, but we are seeing this more and more and more. The first one is the seller-free economy. And essentially what this refers to is, so Gartner has also released some research and they've said that 75% of buyers would prefer to have a seller-free experience. Which makes sense. Like as businesses, we want everyone to call us. But when we're consumers, we want to do everything ourselves. You know, like yeah, we're looking. Let me make the decision. I don't want you to make the decision. As much as possible. Yeah. And then if I need to talk to someone, great. But if I don't need to eat, all the better. Yeah. You know, like even in B2B, like at B2B, you know, you want to make as much as the purchasing decision yourself. So that's why we focus on so much content. Yeah. Arm people with content. If they use it, they don't use us, great. But by the time, if they do use us, there's so much more trust there. You know, but even even we could actually do a better job of that. So essentially, we're talking about things like assessments, configurations, uh, configurators, calculators, um, things like that. We're seeing more and more and more. And right now, there's a really big opportunity. Like all of our clients, we've been saying like, if you want to double your conversion rate, literally, we did this with uh, Solaray back in the day, who now uh, are called one comma five. They got acquired, where we doubled their conversion rate by adding a like a uh, it was like a calculator. Yeah, solar saving calculator. Yeah, it was something like that. It was yeah, some yeah, sort of quiz. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what it was, yeah. but it was a quiz. Yeah. So it's like a no-brainer slam dunk that you could use. Yeah. And you better use it now because because it gets yeah it gets people to interact with. It's like oh I don't need to do I don't need to calculate that anymore. Right. Again, it's the same thing. Yeah. And and also like I would trust uh write someone a written text or something mm. for me to then come to a decision myself, then for like someone to then speak to me about a decision on all my options and stuff are right yeah um cool and then so the next one is ai powered sales automation so yeah, yeah what's that so one about? 
like this is really, really interesting and this is a no-brainer. We're already seeing this happening. As AI gets better and better, its ability to replace typical human sales-driven activity is greatly going to increase. So this one here, like the biggest areas that we see here are follow-up and outreach mm. and based on AI uh, and customer service as well. Like customer service has already been disrupted. There was a company called uh, Dukan, like an e-com retailer in India, a huge e-com retailer. And they let go 85 to 90% of all of their customer service staff. It sounds really sad, like, you know, poor things. Yeah. But the uh, the speed to response went from, the average speed went from two minutes to like two seconds. Yeah. So it's all sad. It's like, oh, we don't want people to lose jobs. But as consumers, we love that. Like we yeah. just spoke about self-selection and whatnot. So this stuff is becoming really, really, really mainstream. Um, I saw this thing, like I've seen recruiters do this, right? So instantly is an outreach tool that we're really big fans of. And not to get sort of too complicated, but I've seen recruiters use scraping tools because I think of recruiters, right? Recruiters want to, one of the tactics they do is if someone's got a job out, they, uh, like a a brand's got a job out, Mm. not not another recruiter, they'll reach out and say, hey, Red Pandas, you're recruiting for this job. We've got people we can send you away. That's very manual. And they've been doing that for decades, right? It's part of their playbook. But like the speed to lead they can do now is crazy. (laughs) It's crazy. They can now scrape all the job boards. Then they can take that data and put it into a sheet. Then they can use ChatGPT to actually write an outreach email that is customized to the ad. Yeah. Right. If there's like a value mentioned or a background or whatever. Yeah. Right. And then you can, not to get too complicated because there's many ways to do this and it's changing all the yeah, time yeah, as course. you and I discussed, but then they can use like a tool like send that to instantly yeah, and then instantly can send outreach emails on repeat on just like autopilot. It's yeah. insane. It's insane. Like this is this and, is not the future. It's already yeah. happening. And it's completely custom. So just forget that. It's personalized and custom to the person's like ad. So when you That's receive right. it, you're like, oh, you know. This guy cares about me. That's right. And recruiters are <laughs> one of the first, like when stuff like this happens, they, they're kind of, they're like, they're, they're as bad as marketers. They abuse sales <laughs> yeah, tactics. Um, but, you know, there's definitely opportunities out there for people to have that speed to lead that is just next level. Um, cool. So uh, AI automated content repurposing. This one's really exciting. This one um, is, it's already out. We're already seeing it. And it's honestly, the reason why this is important is, I, I say this a lot at Red Pandas, like brands need to create a lot more content than they realize. Yeah. Especially if they're not, if they haven't done it before and they start dipping their toe in the water. I always say this, like I find myself saying this, you need to create a lot more content than you realize because of the noise, because of the platforms out there, because of the fact that it takes you a lot of volume to get really, really good. And we see it with our clients all the time. So this is where repurposing is a must for you to like, if you're going to be innovating in your sales and marketing, especially marketing specifically, yeah. repurposing is a must. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know too much about this, but I know there's a yeah, HubSpot what, content yeah, remixing, right? Like, how remix. does that work? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you put you got a master source, and then you got the option to like split it out depending on you know what different you know is it EDMs or is it you know uh, podcasts, a whole bunch of things. So yeah, there is there is a whole features around that and you can then create workflows to then target specific segments and you know a whole bunch of like hubspot stuff that they would normally do all right so yeah but yeah there's other there's other platforms you don't have to go speak with hubspot right but there is also like repurpose the io right who can auto publish and don't even need to log into it yeah repurpose is a one that's based more on tiktoks um and it's really really powerful like what it will do is like you publish on tiktok it will remove the watermark and it'll per, per, literally put it on Reels, YouTube Shorts, Facebook pages, Snapchat, Pinterest. It can even drop it in the Dropbox for you. Yeah. You know, so um, this stuff is already out there. And it's one of those things that if you don't jump on, you're just literally wasting your time. It's like it's a wasted resource because you've already done the hard work effort. It's just like retargeting, like, you know, rechanging up so you can reuse it on other platforms, other people. Like if, you're, if you believe in your product that well, you should then be marketing it out to other people that would want to see it and make benefit out of it, right? So, 100%, 100%. Uh, subscription-based selling. Yeah, this is the final one. So this is something that we're starting to see this in Australia. We're definitely seeing this a lot in the States. So, you know, subscription-based selling. Now, for some industries, it's just built, 
right? Yeah. For example, like software as a service, yeah. they've been doing that for ages. Technically what we do is a subscription as well. Retainers yeah. are a subscription that's in built. But now you're seeing a lot of different industries do this. Car washes are doing this. Uh, barbers are doing this. Are they? Not in Australia, I haven't seen, but from okay. what I've heard in America. I was thinking about that last night because I was getting my haircut. I'm like, man, I come here every two weeks. I wish this guy would just charge me and tell me which days I would come and I have to don't know and think about it. You know, I know that every Thursday on this day, I'm going to be there, but it's yeah. like a hassle to kind of figure it out. So, so it's interesting we're talking about it today. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> like, you know, uh, apparel companies, Yeah. Um, you know, this, uh, what was it? The... Uh, the, the razor company, remember the Dollar Shave Club? Like, uh, you know, they um, pioneered. There was Dollar oh, Shave Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Manscaped does that now that they, they sent a whole bunch of things in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, don't ask why. This know, is getting yeah. really prolific, not just in e those things in e commerce have been happening for a while. Yeah. But it's happening in different businesses or pet care, grooming, entertainment. Yeah. So, um, because everyone wants a piece of this trillion dollar action, like especially in a time of uncertainty and people can't be just chasing yeah. leads and business anymore. It's, and it's um, like, and I, and I think it's also that people do forget, like they've got the subscription. It's kind of nice to go, okay, cool, pops up, and you're like, yeah. Now, in saying that, uh, I think there was uh, based on, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a company in uh, America tying back to this called um, Eileen Fisher. It's a 40 year old. Uh, you know, news, New York based brand that the sort of tells clothing and stuff. So when I read this, I thought it was kind of, uh, you know, related to our topic for today about innovation. So this company has come up with a tool that gets eight uh, real live models with different body types and stuff. And so what they do is uh, if you're going to purchase a product or like a fabric clothing and stuff, uh, you can then you can get the AI to then fit it on those body types that matches your body type. And then you can see it like that's that's pretty OK. But then. Uh, you can go specific with it. It's like if you want to see the shirt that looks like uh, tucked in from the back or like if you want to put other bits and pieces and, you know, you can go really fancy with the AI to kind of really see what that, that looks like. It's called the closet, the AI, um, uh, mm. you know, product. And it has driven 50% more conversions than shoppers who didn't use it. It's crazy. 50%. It's crazy. It's innovation. Like that's sales innovation, marketing innovation, as well as like service innovation. I think that's a great example. Absolutely. On that note. On that note, we'll end it there, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Semi, we'll see you in again in some time. Yeah. Whether it's like six weeks or two months, depending on which sort of definition you're looking on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he doesn't come back. Maybe he stays in Malaysia. Uh, but on that note, guys, we'll join thanks you again much. for another episode of Inbound Buzz. Thanks for listening to Inbound Buzz. Learn anything? Return the favor by spreading the word. Want to make your mark in digital? Need help with your digital strategy, inbound, and marketing automation efforts? Then visit redpandas.com.au and be sure to tune in next time for another Inbound Buzz hit.